Snow with a chance of snow, followed by snow. For an entire winter, depressing battleship gray skies. Until, finally, sweet salvation, spring. Winter banished for another year and in its place, the killer bees. Blue skies, barbecue, and baseball. Dig out your lighter fluid and sunscreen. It's opening day. A big amen to all of that. There's Mariano Rivera, the New York Yankees. Great closer, 559 career saves. In a great season, he could get to 600. Milestones on the minds of many in New York, so our World Series. As baseball tonight begins right now. It is the best day of the year, bar none, opening day. And welcome, everyone, to another season of baseball tonight and our all-star cast now featuring a soon-to-be Hall of Famer in Barry Larkin. Welcome to the show. And John Cruck, of course, is here as well. So Nick Swisher says, boy, we just were in 85 yesterday, and now it's going to be 35. The weather's going to play a role today. But look, the good news here, and we're not weathermen, but when you see green and blue kind of moving out of New York, that's obviously a very good sign. We'll get a report from Yankee Stadium as our game begins one hour from now in just a moment. Opening day. You've been through spring training. All these thoughts were going through your head. What's your thought now just an hour away from the game? Finally. Yeah, really. Finally, it starts to count. Finally, we're out there and it's going to stick with us. What we do out there on the field. There's not tomorrow. There's today. I got to win every single pitch starting today. And if you're a young player, you're just happy you're in the big leagues, you're in a cold weather city because you know you're a major league player. For the veterans, you're looking at the young players like, all right, we saw what he can do in spring training. Can that equate right. to 162 games? If he can, we have something to be special. So it might have a special year. Can you think about somebody else, or are you just focused on Barry Larkin? Well, I'm certainly thinking about myself. We're, we're, we're thinking about the team. We've got to be successful. We've got to work together. But i got to do my job. That's, right. my, that's my job is to do my job. You know, the job of the grounds crew, as you can see, we're less than an hour away from the first pitch, is to clear that field, get that tarp off, and allow them to come on and get set. The Tigers and Yankees with optimism abounding for a game to be played. We are all over the place. There are six games on the Major League schedule today, and you'll see three of them right here on ESPN. Buster and Tim in just one second from Yankee Stadium. Pedro Gomez, of course, at Bush Stadium for the Cardinals as they get set to open against the Padres. And our 8 o'clock Eastern primetime game, Wendy Nick, San Francisco, the defending champ in Los Angeles. Let's start with Buster only. And Buster, the news about the Yankees, at least to me, is Sabathia came out and said in the papers, we're the team to beat. In spite of the fact everyone's looking at Boston, what's the latest news with the Yankees? Well, and part of the reason why the Yankees are feeling good about this season going into it is because CC Sabathia is in much better shape. He dropped about 25 pounds during the offseason. He said to take pressure off his surgically repaired knee. He said he did this by cutting out Captain Crunch from his diet. <laughs> now, this could be an important year for CC Sabathia because he can opt out of his contract after this year. Look, in order to take advantage of that clause and get some leverage in dealing with the Yankees, he's got to have a good year and he's got to stay healthy. Alex Rodriguez looks poised to have a great year. He showed up in camp nine pounds lighter with increased flexibility. He had an 898 slugging percentage in spring training. I talked to Mark Teixeira the other day, his teammate. He said, look, I've been playing with Alex for years. I played with him in Texas in 2003. To me, Alex looks better than in any year since 2003. He had 47 homers that year, Carl. And Robinson Cano talked to me today about the elements which are going to be a factor. It's raw, it's 40 degrees. He pulled out his ski mask and he said, I don't know if I've decided whether or not to wear this. And he was deciding whether or not to use the big or the small hand warmers to put in his back pocket. Now for more on the Tigers, here's Tim. Justin Verlander is absolutely determined to get off to a better start than he has in recent years and don't bet against him. He is a wildly competitive guy. I saw him again this spring in the sprints with the other pitchers and he had to win every single sprint even with the money that he makes and everything else. So don't count Justin Verlander out on any level this year. Miguel Cabrera had a difficult beginning off the field to spring training, but he is poised for another monster year. Jim Leland told me he's the only guy he's ever seen that just fooling around in BP can hit a homer down the right field line and then go right center, center, left center, and left field. He is the best hitter in the American League. And finally, 
little big man at second base, Will Rhymes of the Tigers. He's five foot nine. He weighs 160 pounds. I asked him, how big were you your freshman year in high school? He said, I was 4'11", and I don't know how much I weighed. He said the only guy in the class who was smaller than him was his twin brother, Jonathan, who went on to catch at William & Mary. And Will Rhymes today will be the opening day second baseman for the Detroit Tigers. An incredible story, Tim and Buster. Thank you very much. And Will Rhymes will hit second for the Tigers today. Uh, quickly, did you have to give up Captain Crunch too? No, I still eat Captain Crunch. You do? Okay, I, well, that, I do. that's I do. good. I do. Forty-five people on ESPN.com were asked to pick the AL East winner. They all picked the Red Sox. Mm -hmm. How did the Yankees? defeat the Red Sox? Well, I think the way the Yankees are going to be consistent this year is to have that consistency on the mound. I think CC will be CC. Mm -hmm. Phil Hughes is the guy that I'm looking at to be that guy. Now, he's going to be the number two slot, so he's going to probably have 33 to 35 starts this year. The one thing you look at is pitch count. In 2009, 1,500 pitches, basically. Last year, 3,000 pitches. So, the question is, is he going to be able to handle the load of being that number two starter? Is he going to break down? We'll have to wait and see. He's a very confident guy. So are the Yankees with the lineup. And this has been kind of a subject of discussion for Joe Girardi. How are you going to have Jeter and Gardner? Who's going to hit one? Who's going to hit two? They decide to kind of flip them depending on the pitching matchup. Well, and, and talking to some people with the Yankees when we were there in spring training, they would love for Brett Gardner to, to secure that leadoff yep. spot, to be able to hit lefties as well as righties so they can leave him there. And that would make Derek Jeter the second hitter who, you know, when we talked yesterday, Barry and I, Derek Jeter's probably the best second hitter in all of baseball along with Placido Polanco. So if Jeter can hit second base, the whole lineup gets set up because now you have Nick Swisher hitting sixth behind Robinson Cano to give him protection. And, if, and if, if Gardner can't lead off, then Gardner has to hit ninth. The lineup gets all mixed up. But what you have here is unparalleled speed for anyone in baseball. Brett Gardner is a base dealer to go along with a guy like Jacoby Ellsbury, Carl Crawford, who can run like that. If he gets on base, it makes that hole for Derek Jeter so much more inviting to hit, right. where if he hit it as a leadoff hitter, it's an out. So if, if, if Gardner can lead off and Jeter can hit second and move runners, they're going to score more runs than they did last year, and Derek Jeter is going to have a lot better season than he did in 2000. And not hit into double plays, which Jeter does quite often, well, he, did last he, year. He does, but he's in a situation where, listen, his approach is his approach. He hits the ball down through the zone. He's down through the zone. He's going to hit hard ground balls. If they just happen to be at the second baseman, that's fine. And as a hitter, as a number two hitter, you've got to accept the fact that your job is stay down through the ball. You're going to hit hard ground balls. And if right. you hit it right at him with a man on first base, it's going to be a double play. The quality at bats, that's what Jeter's going to give you. And a bounce back season, the man hit 270 last year. <laughs> When they said that earlier, I'm looking at John going, <laughs> I wish that was the, the least I hit in a season. The, the man is a good hitter. He had a struggle in 08 and bounced back big in 09. I know you guys also come out of spring thinking about numbers and who you're facing right away. So Verlander against uh. Teixeira. Teixeira's one for 17 against Verlander. And Mark tried to change what he did coming into the season the same way Verlander did. Tigers also have changed the way they look, right? they got Victor Martinez now behind the plate in the middle of that order. What do you like about the Tigers? Well, I, I like every – no, I don't like everything about them. I, I like their starting pitching, but they have to perform. You know, Max Scherzer last year, when I talked to Jim Leland in spring training, he said, look, if Scherzer is the second-half pitcher that he was – if, he's, if he pitches like he did in the second half of 2010, he said, with Verlander, we have the best one-two punch in baseball. He said, the best in baseball. I don't know about that, but they can be very good. The problem is, Scherzer's never really had that season. Of, he's never put together a full season. He had a terrible spring this year, so you don't know what he's going to get. He's trying to change his mechanics. He's throwing a sinker more. Right. He's trying to throw a change up. But, you know, Carl, if this doesn't happen, if he can't pitch, they're done. Was that before Wainwright got hurt or, or after Wainwright got hurt that he said Yeah, one, two, uh, well, and, and I, you know, Halliday, uh, Lee, and Oswald, yeah. too. I mean, he's, he said, though, he said he, you know, with the stuff they can possess, he and Verlander, he said they could be the best in baseball. All right, we like to see that. Meantime, how about the lineup for this Tiger team? Gal Cabrera was involved in so many things, and yet he still hits. He's the best hitter in the American League. He certainly is the best, most accomplished hitter in the American League. But the thing about him is this, is who is going to protect him? Why are pitchers going to decide that they have to pitch to him? I think that's why it's so important uh, that Victor Martinez came over. A switch hitter, he's going to be able to protect him. But Ordonez is going to have to step up. Yep. Austin Jackson's going to have to get on base. He can hit a one-run one home run, and that doesn't really going to make a difference. But if there's two or three guys on base and they have to pitch to him in that particular situation, watch out. Ordonez, Cabrera, Victor Martinez. Sounds pretty formidable for a 3-4-5. That's right. That's they're, they're what the Tigers are looking at. 
this season. Meantime, some injury news and injuries have played a huge role this spring. But last night, Barry Zito was in a car accident. He was taken to the hospital. He was literally parked and a car broadsided him. He was brought to a hospital for observations and he has since been let out of the hospital, which is good news for the Giants and their starting staff. But Barry Zito taken to the hospital for observation after getting in a car crash yesterday is now reportedly out of the hospital. The lineup on baseball tonight, Giants and Barry Zito's team takes on the Dodgers tonight as defending World Series champions. Wendy Nick joins us live. Injuries a huge factor. Zach Branke gone for the Brewers to start the season. Will it be a rebound season for Derek Jeter? And as Barry says, how much do they have to rebound if you're hitting 270? A conversation with the captain. Jamie Moyer is going to join us as well to discuss CC Sabathia and Verlander. That really looks like they're going to be playing baseball. Opening day around the majors, 49 minutes away to first pitch. It's the Yankees in their World Series dreams and the Tigers and their dreams as we continue opening day on baseball tonight. Pop the coffee, boys. Every year, there's a lot of optimism for every team on opening day. Opening day, everybody's in first place. The expectations are high for all the fans, for all the teams. It's the start of baseball, and what's better than that? It's basically a playoff atmosphere for the beginning of the season. We get excited, a little bit nervous, anxious. You got the big flag out there in the outfield. You got a ton of fans in the stands. It gives everybody goosebumps to make you feel like a little kid again. You feel like you're just a, a superhero when you're out there, especially when they had the Jets go across the, the stadium. I mean, it's the most beautiful thing in the world. I don't care how many years you do it. You get out that, on that line and you have butterflies. Anybody likes baseball, it's the best day of the year. You'll see the flyover from Yankee Stadium as well as hear the national anthem in just a little while. Victor Martinez now wearing the Tigers uniform. He's got that now. If that's an iPhone or a Blackberry, he's got the picture wearing tweet, a new Carl, uniform. A tweet. He's tweeting. He's yeah. tweeting something. He may be. We're doing that too all season long here on baseball tonight. There you go. Take that. Get that shot. And I'm set to do damage here for the Detroit Tigers. Zach Greinke, part of the injury news that has really dominated the headlines during spring training. Brought into kind of go all in for the Brewers. He's going to miss likely his first three starts. He's got some rib injuries that uh, came as a result of playing in a pickup basketball game. So Greinke will not be able to go. Gallardo will go for the Brewers against the Reds today. Other notable injury news. Adam Wainwright elbow gone for the season. Latos the ace of the Padres staff out with a shoulder. Brian Wilson officially on the 15 day DL. We know about Brad Lidge and Chase Utley. We'll talk much more about the Phillies injuries in just a second. And just yesterday, Jason Bay gets put on the 15-day DL for the New York Mets. The American League, three big questions now from Buster Olney. Here are the three biggest questions in the American League. Number one, can the Boston Red Sox get bounce back years at the back end of their rotation? Last year, Josh Beckett had an ERA near six. John Lackey struggled in his first year with the Red Sox, and Daisuke Matsuzaka struggled with injuries. But this spring, Beckett hasn't looked that good. But going forward, keep in mind that these guys don't have to be great because of that incredible depth that the Red Sox have in their lineup. Big question number two in the American League. Can the Rays completely rebuild the rotation? This was a group that last year had the best relief core ERA in all of the American League. But all of those guys are gone, and now they're replaced by pitchers like Joel Peralta and Juan Cruz and Kyle Farnsworth. The other day I had a conversation with Joe Madden, the Rays manager, about who's going to be his closer. He said he's not sure. It's a pure closer by committee situation. This is a team with a good lineup and a good rotation. Big question number three in the American League, can the Texas Rangers find solutions at the back end of their rotation? Remember, they lost Cliff Lee, and they go into the year with C.J. Wilson and with Colby Lewis, but the injury to Tommy Hunter is going to keep him out for about a month, so they're going to have to hope that young pitchers like Derek Collins step up and fill spots at the back end of that rotation. They, like the Red Sox, have a lot of offense, so there could be a lot of margin for error for that pitching staff. A couple of quick notes. First, the Rays, a seven-year contract extension for Wade Davis, the first four guarantee. They signed that today, and really good injury news. Justin Morneau is going to be in the opening day lineup for the Twins tomorrow against the Blue Jays. That's huge. Let's get to some bold predictions now. We'll start with you. 
Adrian Gonzalez is going to win two-thirds of the Triple Crown with Robinson Cano winning a batting title. I picked him to win four, and he's better start this year because he's starting to upset me about <laughs> not winning one yet. But I just think monster numbers are in store for Adrian Gonzalez. Playing in Fenway Park, 81 games, getting out of Petco. And Barry can tell you, when you play in a ballpark that's conducive to hitting, the first ball he gets jammed on, it hits the monster for a double or goes over for a home run, lights, his eyes are going to light up. He's going to be the happiest human being in the world. He'll be the first one at the ballpark every day wanting to participate participate in BP. I think you're absolutely right, but I'm going to say, you said Robinson Cano is going to win the batting championship. I'm going to say that's going to also happen in Boston. I'm saying Kevin Euclid is going to step up, or Carl Crawford's going to step up, or maybe even Adrian Gonzalez. I think these guys, my prediction, are basically going to sweep everything, every American League award, except for maybe not the rookie of the year. I think the MVP candidate is certainly Adrian Gonzalez, manager of the year, Terry Francona. There you see the playback come, uh, comeback player of the year, and Jacoby Ellsbury, Cy Young, Lester, Crawford, stolen base, and, oh, by the way, I think they're going to win the World Series. I thought you were a red, not a red Well, Sox. you said it was a bold, bold prediction. That's a bold prediction That's right there. <laughs> That's bold. I don't think there's room for a rookie <laughs> they, on the team. They, they don't have a rookie. The rookie. They can't. They, they well, have okay, 25 so, okay, on the okay, roster. Well. Terry Francona does say, though, and Gordon Needs on ESPNBoston.com, with C.J. Wilson going for the Rangers tomorrow at 4 Eastern on ESPN against the Red Sox. It's Mike Cameron going to be in right field and not... J.D. Drew. Once again, the Yankees will have Sabathi on the mound in an opener. The last couple of times he's done that, he has struggled, but obviously this is their horse and their Cy Young candidate. C.C. Sabathia will be facing Justin Verlander, and you see Sabathia's numbers. Speaking of his numbers, all the Sabre metric numbers really point up when you talk about C.C. Sabathia. He's on an incredible list with Halliday, Heron, and Verlander, by the way has the highest wins above replacement from 06 to 2010, meaning Sabathia worth about 32 wins above anybody that would replace him. Jamie Moyer, we welcome him to the Baseball Tonight team. He, of course, has been through the wars for 24 seasons and currently rehabbing an elbow injury. Going to spend the season with us rehabbing. We hope mentally you're going to be okay with us for a full year as well. Welcome to the team. Thank you. It's great to be here. And on what a great day. Best day of the year. Huh? Yeah. It sure is. Best. And when, when you think about wars, you and I think about guys with guns, the whole dynamic has changed. But with regards to these two guys, you want them in your corner, right, in your foxhole. Let's go over Verlander. He kind of came to spring with a whole new approach. What do you expect from him, and how was it going to help him? Well, I think Justin Verlander came to spring training with a totally new mindset. And I, I think he took that mindset and started from day one. He prepared, started actually in the offseason, came to spring training ready to go, and is going to be lights out here today. As we see him, what can we expect from him on the mound? Well, back? you know what? He's dominant. He's got a dominant fastball. He's got a great breaking ball. And when he can command his changeup, you know, he's really tough. But, you know, being able to move, use that fastball to both sides of the plate, I think, is going to be hugely important to him and getting off to a great start and creating an edge for himself. Uh, you pitched in four opening days. Sabathia's numbers last couple of years have not been very good. He's on the mound again. Is there a reason for that? You know, I don't know if there's necessarily a reason for it. You know, you can you can maybe use weather as, as part of it. But you know what? The bell's ringing today. It's time to go. So I think, you know, again, CC needs to go out and establish himself uh, as the dominant pitcher he is. Again, there's another guy where his fastball location is quite important. But being able to get that breaking ball at slider down and into that right-handed hitter, down and away from the left-handed hitter, I think it's going to be very, very important. But again, creating a tempo. Who's going to create that tempo? Who's going to control that game? And either one of these guys could do that. All right, we'll keep an eye on that. Watch for tempo. Watch for breaking balls. Jamie Moyer back with us in just a bit. To talk about among things, uh, how to deal with great hitters. Robinson Cano, of course, is one of those. Uh, we've got some guys who think he's an MVP candidate, maybe a batting title as well, 40 minutes away, and it is chilly there in New York. Sun is shining at Bush Stadium in St. Louis. That's great news. You'll be able to see the Cardinals dealing with the Padres. And I mentioned facing great hitters. Tim Stauffer has to face Albert Pujols today. That's his day. It has been the nightmare for nearly every other pitcher that has to deal with Pujols. What makes him so good? <laughs> Everything. That ball is hammered. A liner on its way. Adios. I just try not to look at him, look at the catcher, look at the glove, and just try and throw strikes and get him out. That's exactly why you play this game, is to, is to go out there and, and play against the best. <laughs> well, it's a scary time. There's a drive. This one way back. She is gone. 
he just stays on everything. Obviously, is tremendous power to all fields. You know, he just never gives in that bad away. You definitely have to respect a guy like Albert and respect the fact that he can change the outcome of a game with one swing. I think the biggest thing is just to, you know, heighten your focus level and hopefully you can trick him because he doesn't get tricked very often. Back here on Baseball That Out, among the biggest stories in the offseason was the Albert Pujols negotiations in an attempt to get an extension with the St. Louis Cardinals. Ten years, reports of $300 million, it never happened. So Albert Pujols begins this season as a free agent to be. 312, 42, and 118 last season. This spring, you know, pretty standard for Albert Pujols, 288, slugging over 500. He had three home runs, 14 runs batted in, and oh, home 30 total bases. All right, we continue our coverage of opening day. Pedro Gomez now from Bush Stadium, Yankee Stadium. Weather's going to be a factor. How about where you are? Carl, I don't think so. It's, it's a little overcast, but temperatures are supposed to reach the mid-50s. Perfect Midwest March 31st day. That, that shouldn't be a problem. The Albert Pujols situation also should probably not be a, pro a problem for the Cardinals this year if his track record is any indication. This is somebody who has been Rookie of the Year, World Series participant, World Series champion, three-time MVP. His manager, Tony La Russa, said he has never seen anyone as focused as Pujols, and La Russa started managing in 1979. He said that Pujols always, always answers the bell. Another problem the Cardinals have is obviously losing Adam Wainwright. This is somebody who won 20 games in 19 the last two seasons. Now, unlike every other club in the National League, maybe other than the Phillies or the Giants, the Cardinals have an ace still in their stable. They have Chris Carpenter. He's won 17 and 16 the last two seasons. He should be able to shoulder the load and not have one of the younger pitchers have to feel like they have to overcompensate. That's definitely a benefit for the Cardinals. They're playing the Padres today, obviously. Adrian Gonzalez, the face of the San Diego Padres, a guy who had 31 home runs, drove in 101 runs, played in 160 games. How do you compensate for the loss of an all-star like that? Well, that's going to be difficult considering Will Venable was next in line with 13 home runs on this team and Chase Headley was next with 58 RBIs. It'll fall on Brad Hopp at least to start the season. He's going to be the first baseman. Hopp is no stranger to taking over for an icon, though. In Colorado, he did replace Larry, um, Larry Walker in right field, so that was not an easy transition to make either. Now, this is a club that won 90 games last season, was in contention until game 162, Carl, the very last day of the season. But when you look at their opening day roster this year and compare it to a year ago, there are only eight players mm. that were on the opening day roster a year ago that are on right now. Now, granted, Matt Latos is also on the roster, but he's on the disabled list. But even if he were healthy, that would mean only nine. That's very, very difficult for a club that won that many games to try to repeat without the with all that roster transition. Carl? Without question. Pedro Gomez, Bush Stadium, given the fact the Giants are a little older, maybe a little bit better, as well as the Colorado Rockies. That's Bush Stadium and Pedro Gomez, of course, Padres and Cardinals at 4 o'clock Eastern time. You, know, you talk about Albert Pujols, and you are talking about a multi-MVP guy who now will have potential suitors lining up, whether they be in Chicago or Washington or Los Angeles, or perhaps even Baltimore with the reach. He takes 408 career home runs to the yard this season, and the Cardinals certainly with Wainwright had every indication that they were going to be a contender. That hasn't changed, but Jamie Moyer rejoins us now. You faced Pujols. I think you faced him 11 times. You only got three hits off of you. Tim Stauffer gets that job today. What's the best way to pitch Albert Pujols? Well, the best way to pitch Albert Pujols is to be smart. You want to have a game plan going into the game. Figure out when you want to pitch to him and how you want to pitch to him. And I think once you can determine that, um, you know, who's hitting in front of him, who's hitting behind him, and, you know, you're going to attack him, yeah, maybe to set up, Maybe you don't want to really pitch to him this at bat, but I'm going to show him some pitches that maybe in the next at bat, if I have to pitch to him, I have him hopefully set up because he's such a great hitter. Right. Here are some guys who clearly have Albert either out on the front foot, laid on some swings. Is that moving the ball around? When you say smart, what does that mean? Well, I, you how do you do it? It's moving the ball around. It's changing speeds. Um, it's trying to move him back off the plate. Again, you, as you can see in some of the highlights, too, he's a guesser. He's going to guess, and he's going to pick his spots to look in, look away, because he knows the opponent that he's facing. So now it becomes that cat and mouse game. So if I can learn 
that, you know what, I'm going to get you to chase. Right. Good. I'm going to try to create something inside so I can open that door away. Your, your father-in-law, Digger Phelps, would say, yeah, Jamie changed speeds. He went from 40 to 35. <laughs> And what's the best way to get a guy who's those dangerous to hitter? Do you ever recognize at some point, like, well, he got me. He's that good. Well, he is that good. He he's is? a great hitter, and he's established that year in and year out. So now it's a matter of, you know what? Figure out what you're going to do, and figure out, am I, am I going to let this guy beat me, right. or am I going to make the next guy? All right. So we'll keep an eye on Tim Stafford. Try to get him off balance. See what he does. Pools, of course, is uh, as good as there is in the game. And a reminder, by the way, you'll be able to see them at 4 Eastern time today. Giants and the Dodgers at 8 o'clock Eastern time. Baseball tonight on in between those two games, as well as at midnight Eastern tonight. So our baseball day is just beginning, and we'll be here all day and all night for you viewers at home. All right, so Albert Pujols is certainly one of these big factors. Let's get uh, Barry Larkin's thoughts now. You played at 17 opening yeah. days, all right? 17 opening days. Um, expectations were always pretty big on you as an individual. Mm -hmm. Give me some bold predictions as you look forward to this season with who might have big years. You know, a lot of times when you start talking about the Florida Marlins, you start talking about Hanley Ramirez, but I think this guy, Mike Stanton, is going to be a top five MVP candidate. He's a big guy. He's a strong player. He had some success last year. I look to him to, you see, 22 home runs. Yeah. I look to him to hit upwards of 30 to 35 home runs. I think Mike Stanton is going to be one of the top contenders contenders for MVP this year. Prodigious length on his home runs this spring. Absolutely. I mean, prodigious. All right, let's go back to the Cincinnati Reds. Joey Votto was here this winter shooting one of those sports center spots, but that's not your bold prediction guy. Another guy that flies under the radar, Jay Bruce, has a tremendous amount of fire in his belly. He wants to be the guy. He told me in spring training he wanted to be the guy to be relied on. He hit the home run to put them into the postseason last year again. Guy fly under the radar, another MVP candidate. The Reds are not flying under the radar. The defending Central Division champions open up against the Brewers today. A lot of questions about both those teams. For Tim Kirkshin's three questions, let's join him now. These are the three biggest questions in the National League this year. Number three, the future of Prince Fielder and Albert Pujols. The Brewers are going to try to keep fielder all year in case they win the division but if they're out of it at the end of July they're going to have to trade him because he's a free agent at the end of the year. I don't see any scenario where the Cardinals trade Albert Pujols. He will go to free agency after this year and they'll do everything to re-sign him. Number two, the comeback of Chipper Jones. He told me this spring he has never swung the bat this well from both sides of the plate in spring training. Larry Parrish, the hitting coach for the Braves, said he's never seen any hitter have as good a spring as Chipper Jones. If he can play 140 games this year, the Braves could be the best team in the National League. And number one, the injury history of the Phillies. Dominic Brown won't be back until May. Brad Lidge is going to be out three to six weeks. And most important, Chase Utley, we're not sure when he's coming back. It could be May. It could be July. It could be not at all this season. He is the heart and soul of that club in every way, and they are going to miss him tremendously. Hi, Tim. Thank you very much. The expectations are enormous here, Crocky. And, Jamie, you know that about playing in Philadelphia. The seats are all sold out. They've spent all the money. they got the pitchers. How much trouble do these injuries put them in? Well, I think the injuries put them in trouble, but I also think their approach at home play puts them in a lot of trouble, too, because you, now you're taking 20 homers and 80, 90 RBIs from Jason Worth out. Chase Utley's going to be out for a significant time. You don't know when he's coming back. Their approach at the plate has been horrific the last few years. Terrible situational hitting team. They swing at breaking balls at all costs, and they're going to keep continue to get breaking balls. And that, to me, what puts them in trouble. The fact that Utley's going to be out puts them in more trouble because of the fact he's such a dynamic player offensively. He can do so many things for that team with his speed, with his base running. But they're going to miss him badly. And they, are, to me, they're in bigger trouble than what people think. They sound like a pitcher's dream, the way he just described that offense. Well, you know what? The offense you know, can be hot and cold at times. But, you know, they're going to have to play defense, too. Obviously, the big four in their starting rotation, that's huge. But, you know, you've got Joe Blanton at the back end. Mm -hmm. Is Joe going to be there? You know, is he really going to be there? You know, are they going to make a move? You know, now the chase is out, Brad Lidge is out. Um, you think they need to do that? Well, you know what? It's Consider a possibility. It? I mean, you know, you don't know how long Chase is going to be out. If mm -hmm. Chase is out, you know, beyond the All-Star break, you might, you might strongly consider that. Give me some names then. If you're considering maybe making a move with Glenn, who are you bringing back? Michael Young. Michael Young? 
Yeah, I agree with Michael Young coming there. I mean, he'd be a perfect fit for that ball club. A veteran guy who, who's a good situational hitter to go with Polanco, the only two real situational hitters they have on that team. You know, now you can score runs without hitting homers. That's been the problem with the Phillies. When they hit homers, they're the best offensive team you'll ever see in your life. When they're not hitting homers, they are absolutely terrible. On a, on a afraid meter, how afraid are they of this Utley injury, do you think? Uh, I think they're very concerned. I think they're very concerned. But again, you know, they had those four starting pitchers. And you know what? They're going to win a lot of baseball games, but how many games can they win 2-1, to 3-2, to 4-3? to three? You're the you pitcher. Know, in that ballpark, you know what? It's a tough place to pitch. You know, it can wear on guys. You know, if, if, you're, if you're pitching well and just pitching well enough to lose, it can be tough. Does it change your approach when you go to the mound? No, I don't think it changes your approach at all. No, not at all. And if they had to trade Blanton to get a, another part to help them, whether it be a bullpen part or a second base part, and one of the big four struggles, this could be a long year in Philadelphia. The, the three can pitch great, but if the fourth doesn't, they could be in trouble if they're not scoring. Well, from World Series participant to long season. CC Sabathia hoping to get the season off to a good start. He has uh, said in newspapers in New York he expects the Yankees to win the whole thing. Tigers and Yankees coming up. Baseball tonight coming right back. Season connect with baseball tonight. Chat with the guys on Facebook. Follow them on Twitter. Read the latest on your team on the ESPN.com network of sites and get news and scores on your mobile device. Baseball tonight, every night on ESPN. Well, the news on Barry Zito, and again, if you uh, hadn't heard, he was in a one-car car accident to when he was broadsided. He is now going to have an MRI. He has been released from the hospital. This happened on Wednesday. He's now out. He believes he's going to be able to start on Sunday. He's dealing with a stiff neck and a back that's banged up a little bit. But Barry Zito out of the hospital, scheduled for an MRI. Of course, our 8 o'clock Eastern time game is the Giants defending World Series champions against a rebuilt Los Angeles Dodger team. Wendy Nix joins us now live from Los Angeles with the latest on the San Francisco Giants, who actually do look a little different than they did last year. Carl, it's interesting for a team that actually looked quite similar to that team that most recently won the World Series. There have been some changes leading up to opening day. Top prospect Brandon Belt will start at first base for the Giants. That means in the meantime, Aubrey Huff moves to right field. As expected, closer Brian Wilson will begin the season on the disabled list after straining a muscle on his left side. There is, however, now concern within the Giants organization, though, that this injury could linger. And on the left side of the infield, perhaps not a new face, but certainly a new body at third base. Pablo Sandoval shed nearly 40 pounds during the offseason. He had a very productive spring. He says as a result, Miguel Tejada is a change at shortstop. Both players something to watch for tonight. As far as the Dodgers, after seven years under the tutelage of Joe Torre, both in New York and here in Los Angeles, Don Mattingly will manage his first major league game tonight. There is a feeling here in L.A. that his laid-back personality has reinvigorated this team, something the Dodgers hope will carry into the regular season, which do does begin just a little less than eight hours from now. And, Carl, unless perfection is a problem, weather will not be an issue here on the West Coast. No, it certainly looks nice out there. We're looking forward to taking the Baseball Tonight crew out there on Sunday as we begin our road segment to the series and the season. It's tonight at 8 o'clock Eastern Time. Great line, by the way, from Aubrey Huff. After Belt found out he was going to be on the team, he cried. And Huff looked at him and said, what are you crying for? I have to play right field now, <laughs> not you. I hope the pitchers aren't crying. Brandon Belt at first base. That's tonight, 8 Eastern, right after baseball tonight at 7 o'clock. And I mentioned Sunday, the Baseball Tonight team will be in Los Angeles as we take the Baseball Tonight show on the road this season, beginning with our 1230 during the day shows and then again at 7 o'clock at night. Looking forward to traveling ESPN2 Sunday night. Time for the base to be put in places and the fans getting set. This is the first March game ever at Yankee Stadium. Of course, uh, they played one in November before in the old building. Smiles on everybody's faces. This is opening day. Let's go. At Yankee Stadium, they are now lining the batter's boxes. And with under 14 minutes of the first pitch, looks like the 2011 season is going to come off without a hitch. Let's go back to the Yankee Stadium broadcast booth and Sean McDonough. 
Carl, as you well know, last year Josh Hamilton of the Texas Rangers was the American League MVP. Today here at Yankee Stadium as the Yankees host the Tigers, we'll get a look at the two players who finished second and third in that balloting. In the case of the Detroit Tigers, Miguel Cabrera finished second in the AL MVP race, and a lot of people think he's the favorite to win it this year. Yeah, Sean, I had the pleasure of getting the opportunity to play with Miguel Cabrera with the Florida Marlins in 2007. And along with being one of the most gifted hitters in all of Major League Baseball, I found him to be one of the smartest. His ability to make adjustments on the fly, understand what an opposing pitcher is trying to do to him night in and night out, at bat to at bat, is really what it most impressed me about Miguel Cabrera. And if you talk to Jim Leland about him, he talks about obviously how great he is, but how smart he is. And when J Leland messes something up, usually Cabrera is the first one to know about it and sometimes the only one. And Jim Leland says Miguel Cabrera is our smartest player by far. When we talk about the MVP race last year, I think a lot of people would be surprised to learn that Robinson Cano finished third, really emerged as a great star in Major League Baseball. And how about getting that kind of production out of a second baseman? There's very few teams in baseball that can say that. He scored over 100 runs. He drove in over 100 runs. He won the gold glove as the best defensive second baseman in the game. Only committed three errors. He won the silver bat for what he did offensively. Third in the the MVP award, Sean, as you mentioned. In fact, he was named on every single ballot at 28 years of age. Right now, he's the best all-around player for the Yankees. When this year is over with, he might be the best player in the American League. So we'll get a look at some of the best hitters in baseball here today, but you would expect the pitchers to have the edge on a cold and damp day. And what a matchup we have. Justin Verlander and CC Sabathia. Over the last five years, only Roy Halladay has won more games than those two. First pitch, 1 o'clock, and shortly thereafter on ESPN. Anyone surprised that Derek Jeter in his career is hit 364 against Justin Verlander? Was this whole thing with Jeter planned to kind of give the captain a little more edge to him? He'll never show it, but in a recent conversation, you certainly got the impression, at least I did, that the feathers had been ruffled. And as far as MVPs, Jeter's never won one. He's finished in the top 10 seven times, second twice in 2009. He was third. He expects big things this season. There was some concern that you weren't going to come back, the whole, the whole contract situation. Uh, it was never a concern for me. Never? No. I always knew this is where I wanted to play. But that doesn't always work that way. It doesn't always work out that way, but it worked out that way for me. When I think about 08 for you, and I look at 2010, there's a lot of similarities. And some people forget what happened in 2009. How do you explain what happened in 2010 with the numbers going down, and what do you expect in 2011? How do I explain it? Is man, I hit 270. I mean, that, that's it. I, I, you know, if I had an explanation for it, I wouldn't have done it. You know what I mean? I think it was just one of those years. Um, you know, I haven't had, I haven't had one of those. But. Strike zone changing? <laughs> no, I mean, yeah, it'd be easy for me to sit here and say, oh yeah, the strike zone was different. It's bigger uh, against uh, the two. strike zone was bigger against me, and the pitchers bared down more against me. No, it's just, it is what it is. You know, it happened. I, I wish it didn't, but um, you know. If, Hitting 270 is going to be the worst year of my career. I'll take it, you know, it's, but it's my job to come out and try to do better. The core four is now the, the, the key three, I guess. Is that is that the term now being used? I don't know. Is that what they're saying? Yeah. Is that a good one? You have another one for That's you? Fine. No, I, 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 I really don't. You know, it's it's a uh, thing with Andy retiring. You know, he left us for a, a few years, so we we'll always get on him about that. So it's, it's, uh, it's not the first time that he hasn't been here. Um, but, yeah, we've been together for a long time. You know, it's the first time, what, history of any yeah. sport three guys have been together that long so I don't think you'll see it too often people who look at you and Mariano and Jorge would think like three musketeers really serious about everything is there any three stooges in any of you guys by far you know it's it's yeah I always hear that how serious we are and uh, um, the Yankee business way or business like but we have fun you, you can't play this game for that long and, and I think you have any Kind of success unless you have fun. Now, whether we decide to share that with you, it's a different story. A lot's been made of Alex's spring, and people are like, he's going to have a massive year. Do you look at Alex any differently this year as you do any other year, with expectations? No, no, 
you know, it's there's always expectations on Al, uh, you know, but his expectations are higher than anyone else's. You know, I've joked with him and said he needs to slow down a little bit down here. You don't want to waste everything in spring training. But, you know, he, he comes ready to play. He's as prepared as any player I've ever played with. And um, he expects a lot out of himself. So, you know, we expect a lot out of him. And, and I'm looking for him to have a, a huge year this year. What do you make of what the Red Sox did in the offseason and how it impacts the Yankees? Yeah, it's, it's – uh, what they've done, I mean, it goes without saying how good they are. You know, I, I've said it before, I think, you know, last season especially, you know, we caught a break, Tampa caught a break with all the injuries that they had. And it was unfortunate for them, but they had some key guys go down. And you have those guys coming back, plus the additions. Uh, you know, they're going to be up there with any team in the game, but it seems like it's always that. That's Maybe. always the case. What's the formula for success for a team winning a championship? Hey, you got to pitch, you got to hitch, you got to play defense. And you have to do all the little things. But I think probably the most important is you have to stay healthy. So I think every year, obviously, people get hurt, but you got to stay away from the key injuries. I always say good players, good health, and some good luck. What am I missing? you got to have a lot of luck. A lot you got to have a lot of luck. You know, when you – people are probably tired of me saying it, but I always say that the best teams make the playoffs and the hottest team wins. You get to the postseason, any team's capable of going on a run. So, uh, you know, if you're going to go on a run, you got to have a lot of luck, too. And at the big ballpark in the Bronx, the Tigers now lining the third baseline. Miguel Cabrera has been introduced. Speaking of MVP candidates, the game is about seven minutes away. We'll be back with more baseball tonight. Well, you get a chill every time he runs out of the field, and anybody really on opening day. The captain, Derek Jeter, being introduced to the Yankee faithful, Mark Teixeira as well. Still working on their old fist bumps, but that's that that'll come. You know, that'll that'll come. Right? You know what I loved about opening day and the the whole you know, circumstance is the flyover. Yeah. The Jets coming over. And an opening day when the weather was terrible, they would cancel it. So yeah. you know it's too cloudy or the clouds were too low and you wouldn't get the flyover. Johnny, that upset me. He seemed to be upset. I, I, it now. really did. I, I'm feeling this right now. Sadly, I don't ever remember a flyover. <laughs> they probably didn't do it in they, Philly. They, they they may not have done it every year you were there. I don't remember. No. Well, they did it in Cincinnati. I love well, it. Well, we'll look for your weaker numbers in a game and realize, wow, there was no flyover. Time now to go back, fly <laughs> to Yankee Stadium. Haley Swindle, the granddaughter of George Steinbrenner with the national anthem. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we at the twilight's last gleaming whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight o'er the ramparts we watched were so gallantly and the rocket's red glare, the bombs bursting in air, gave proof through the night that our flag was still there. Oh, say does that star space. A very special moment for the Steinbrenner family, having the uh, granddaughter of George Steinbrenner, Haley Swindle, sing the national anthem. And you must just be 
in heaven. You saw the flyover. You know, I did see it, but I didn't feel the roar of the engine. So being it, seeing it on TV is totally different. Yeah, I appreciate that. That's just not the same. That's not the same. No, it's not the same. Anything you can do to kind of make him feel comfortable? I'm, you're not feeling me on this one right here. I, I, I don't ever recall having a flyover on opening day. I'm, maybe I missed something. All right, I think the Jeter thing is fascinating this yeah. season. What's he going to yeah. do this year? What are his numbers this year? I, well, you know what? I think people look too much into the numbers. I think he'll give you quality at bats. I think him hitting second is great. I think situational hitting, he'll put them in positions to score runs. 300, 100 runs scored. <laughs> this is going to be numbers. good. I got some numbers. <laughs> we look forward to seeing you all day and night long here as our ESPN baseball opening day coverage continues. Back to the Bronx and Sean McDonough.